the coach is here and then you can give me tips so what should i do oh oh ah Ooh. oh cool. okay okay oh. <laughs> well no you're good oh okay, okay. <laughs> ah that's a roll tube okay yeah now this spreads oh my goodness <laughs> well, can I give you a tip? What? I wouldn't do that. I can show maybe a different one. All right, how would you do it? And I could pull down to here. Yeah, okay. Holy shit, look at that. I'm very proud. You did a good job. <laughs> Genius. Hey, Justin Pate from the Rap Institute, and this is a very special Never Stop Learning video because what we're going to be doing is taking our TWI Platinum line, which is the ultimate rap tools, mixing them with the ultimate professional rap tips and tricks from the Rap Institute, and showing the best DOI rapper in the world, how to rap like a professional. And that is Paradox. <laughs> Let's go. I have no idea what I'm doing, but he's gonna show me the actual technique. I think you know more than what you, <laughs> I, think, I think you're doing quite fine. But you have great tips. Well, let's refine the process. All right, right? okay. But the idea right now is I just showed you all the tools. Yes. The TWA Platinum line. Yes. Why well, they're really good. And then the idea is I also showed you the sequential order for cleaning a car. Right. The way this, really high quality but also efficient mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i want to see how much you remember all right and if you could actually do it the coach is here <laughs> to coach me through this whole process so we're well, gonna right now i'm gonna be cleaning this hood and he's gonna tell me what to do right so first step first step i Just fold the towel fold the towel and you fold it in quarters Four? Yeah, and four. Is this good? That's perfect. Okay, right. okay. All right. So now you take this, and this is absolute in water. Okay, this is the this is the lighter solution. Lighter solution. So okay. this is 256 to one. So and this is the first one? That, that's it. Okay, first and then do I is, spray the thing? Yep. We're just gonna the whole hood. The whole hood. Okay, okay. There so we go. So the main idea is right now, you just want to get the dirt off. And this sprayer is super cool, because it double sprays. And you can do a 365. So being extra thorough. I feel like it's just misting it on there. Am I, am I not getting it wet enough? No, I think it's good. It's oh, okay, anything. okay. It's not using a lot of liquid. I like but that. But you can twist it. You can twist it though. Oh. No, no. You like, can twist the cap and make it a little more. Cool. Okay. That's right. I don't know how wet I wanted this hood. You know, you want it wet. And what's cool about it though, you know, and what's, what's, what's awesome about the Absolute product right now, this is the rinse and wash, is right now you want to wait. Oh, wait. Which is hard for me and hard for you. Okay. Right? But the idea is right now, the longer you let it sit on, like 30, 40 seconds, the easier it is to clean. So it's actually doing the cleaning for you. Ah. So it's almost like when you do the oven cleaner and you spray it and it okay. kind of foams up and then you wipe it off. So it's the same kind of logic right now so that the polymers are getting under the dirt right? and then you can wipe it off. So I think it's cool to wipe now, so it's good. But the idea is you want to wipe it systematic. Okay. Overlapping strokes, you don't want to miss any area and then you want to check to see if it's clean. Like this. Yeah, absolutely. But the idea right now, now you're cleaning with a towel. You can keep on going, okay, doing your thing. Okay. But right now, the reason why we're working with these particular towels for cleaning right now is they're super absorbent. And right now, around the halfway point, you can rotate your towel. Okay, so now you get, yeah. So the reason why you flip it now is it's dry and it's gonna absorb more moisture. So always about halfway through the hood, you flip the towel because now it's gonna absorb. And the idea is do you wanna absorb, but you see how much it absorbs and it dries super quick. So it's not leaving a lot of moisture on. It does. And now you're good. So now you double check the towel, is it clean? Yes. Cool. So now you don't have to clean it again. But right now, if you cleaned it and it was still dirty, uh -huh. you would just clean it one more time. Oh, okay. Right? So now that you cleaned it right now, the next step is to clay bar. Clay bar. Right. So now you're going to switch. Now you're going to go to this spray bottle, which has a little bit more absolute in it, so okay. it slides, right? And then I'm actually going to get you the clay right over here. But I don't want to spray it yet. Yes, you do. I do want to spray it. Yeah. Okay. And you want to make it nice and juicy. Nice and juicy. Yeah. Or the clay bar. Okay, yeah. got it. So right now what you're doing, even though you've cleaned it right now, you're still coming back in with Absolute. And what the Absolute does is it's not going to clean the car, it's going to allow the clay bar to slide evenly across the surface. <laughs> 150 car, one pack. As long as you keep it clean. Cool. <laughs> hey. See, it's almost like you're a matador. You are. The triple S. It's kind it of smells like strawberry. Strawberry lemonade. <laughs> now we're ready? Now we're ready. All right, let's party. <laughs> you're up and roll, baby. So you spray it on and you can even twist it if you want it juicier. Okay. We'll twist it and see if that makes it a little juicier. There we go. There we go. Oh, cool. okay, okay. So what better. I like about this spray bottle is it's really refined in the sense that now you can do super, super fine mist. You can spray in a stream, whatever works, right? So once you do that, and now you make it nice and wet, you did an awesome job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now you want to juice this a little bit. So spray, oh, okay. spray juice the this too? Yeah. With spray. the red bottle? Yeah, and this is the clay part, so you want to use the light blue side and not the dark blue side. If you have bugs on it, you use a dark blue, but light blue for clay. 
And basically you want to overlap it just like it is. So start at the far left. Oh. <laughs> well, no, you're good. Okay. But right. I'm just saying if you're systematic, you don't want to miss a spot. Right, 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 right. And this is about quality. So this is about making sure the paint is hyper, hyper smooth. Okay. What's cool about it is you don't need to press hard, right? So you just be super thorough top to bottom. And this is about, you want your Paradox film to just look like paint. Okay. And this is the critical step to make it look like paint. So just be extra thorough top to bottom. Okay. So as you focus right now, again, you don't have to rotate. You just keep on going, doing your thing. You don't have to press hard. And especially on older cars, because you like to kind of work on cars that are like a little older, you know, friends cars oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Uh -huh. So this is huge too, because those cars I'm sure you've wrapped before and you see little specks underneath the vinyl. Yeah. This is the part that takes that away. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That's and, good. And again, this is from the Rad Company as well. This is what's called their clay bar scrubber. And what's cool about this is this will get you maybe 100, 150 cars before you have to buy a new one. 150 car, one pack. As long as you keep it clean. <laughs> cool. All right. So now because it's, the clay bar process is a very wet process right now. Right. Now the hood is nice and wet. So instead of taking this towel and wiping 10 times. Yeah. Now you can use this. So this one is one time. Yeah. One time. So this is a drying towel. So you flip it out. So you feel like Zorro. Wait, 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 wait. So we'll start on one end, right? Yeah. And you can actually, you don't even have to do it. You could actually pull it. So if you actually stand on this side and pull it across. Oh, you just pull it across? Just pull okay. it across. Like literally you have to trust that it'll just literally soak up all the moisture in one pull. And then you can put it here. Oh, look at that. So basically two pulls. Now you get here, you just slap it on and you just pull it across. So very, it really is flowy, but look how dry that is. So in two pulls, you dry the hood. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so you, it's almost like you're a matador. You are, you are, that's dope. Cool. Okay. So now you've cleaned the car, right? But you've cleaned the hood, but you haven't cleaned the edges. So right. Now let's open the hood. Open the hood, okay. Open the hood. So we got the hitch over there. It's kind of on the right side. Cool. Uh -huh. So then we prop it open. Now you want to come back to the cleaner and you want to clean the edges. And you okay. want to do what's called the 360. So start so, maybe at the middle and make sure you do a full loop to make sure all the edges are clean. The middle up top or in the... It doesn't matter where. Just I as just spray the rag, right? Yeah. Right, so we'll, you just we'll want to start, start at one point and do a 360. It doesn't matter where right, you start. Just one consistent wipe? Yeah, but basically when you do an edge, let's say you start here and go to the corner. Yeah. Look at the towel and if it's clean, oh, keep yeah. on going. But if it's not clean and it's dirty, you do it one more time. Because right now, where your material is going to fail the most yeah. is on the edges, right? Okay. So edges are extremely important to get clean. It's not going to fail in the middle of the hood, so it's not hypercritical to get perfectly clean, but the edges have to be perfectly clean. Correct. And if you do a 360 and you use the right cleaners and you really focus on the dirt, you're good. And that 360 is fast and it's super efficient. So right now, I'm very proud. You did a good job. <laughs> okay, I'm right? passing so far. So far, all right. right? So now we're going to switch gears. So right now you've cleaned, you've clay barred, which is cool. Now we need to take the oil off the surface, any contaminants right now. Okay. So we're gonna switch to isopropyl alcohol. Alcohol, yep. got it, yellow rag. Yep, and in this case still, we're gonna, I'll do it for you. Okay. We're gonna fold it, right? And the reason why we use a lighter color for the towel for degreasing right now is if you go to degrease right now and there's still dirt on it, yeah. you know, right? Okay. Now you're good. All right. So you wanna so juice gonna, it up. We're gonna juice it up. Yep. So normally, I don't use that much, but he says to just just lay it on there like that, seasoning <laughs> like a turkey. Right? Then, sure. Okay. And you want to do the same 360? Same thing. Yep. All right, here we go. Yeah, because the reason why you juice it up is because if it's nice and wet, right? Yeah. Uh, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol tends to dry out really quick. And I want it to stay nice and moist okay. when I do the 360. Yeah. You guys, you guys know what I'm going to do when I get home? When we're wrapping cars, we're gonna make Vlad do this. Oh, <laughs> our kid. Absolutely. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, so you did a degrease. So now clean, degrease, you're good to go. Now we're gonna drop the hood. Okay. So I come down here. So now you're gonna degrease the main surface with the same towel, same isopropyl alcohol. Same. Oh, okay. I'll flip it. Right. Because right now, even though the absolute clean and clay bar and it feels smooth, there still might be oil on the surface. And that's what you want to take off with a degreaser. And isopropyl alcohol is super cheap. You can buy it anywhere. Awesome. Same. 70 percent though, right? 70 percent. 90 is too strong. 90 is too strong. That'll burn the clear coat. Yeah. Right. But 50 is too wet, and it okay. doesn't quite degrease enough. So 70 is the sweet spot. You don't have to dilute it. You don't have to do anything. Just very straightforward. So you're wiping back and forth. Yeah. And again, because you wipe back and forth, you're getting 100 percent of the surface degrease, which is awesome. And you've already done the edges, which is cool. So now one half is done and this hood looks amazing. And that's what is great about the Absolute 
and the degreasing and the clay bar is just it really makes the hood look brand new which is okay. cool so what's awesome is when the when you take the wrap off in two or three years the hood's going to look this good which is awesome right. so now you've degreased now the next step and this is where kind of the wrapping suits change the game in terms of wrapping now you want to grab triple s the triple s this is the one go get it in the link below it's awesome so now you're going to generously spray the entire hood okay so you want to make sure so, so this is about coating so this isn't about aftercare this isn't about anything you really want to make it juicy right now uh-huh and you want to really leave, juicy okay. yeah so you want to leave Do i want to get on the edges too anywhere. anywhere so right now you can be super thorough because we're going to come back and degrease the edges right before we wrap oh okay great and i love the way it smells it smells awesome so this is it kind smells of smells like, like strawberries strawberry lemonade <laughs> no seriously cool and uh, this smell was, come up, came, was uh, created by Anthony from the Rag Company. He came up with this smell. It's awesome. So now you don't want to you don't want to push too hard. Okay. So the idea right now is just to level it out, but not pull as much off the surface. So this from, isn't about cleaning it off. This is about just lightly kind of spreading it across the surface from the middle, wherever you Anywhere. want, whatever okay. makes you happy. All right. What makes you happy? I just want to make sure I cover everything. So Not I like good. to start from like one side to the other. Yeah. So again, if it streaks and stuff like that, it's totally fine because the vinyl is going to go on top. So you just want to make sure it's nice and even from side to side. So nice once you and even. Up, we yeah. don't care about any of this no. leftover residue. So when I when I asked Dave from PNS to develop Triple S for us in the Rap Institute, I said, I want a solution that dries really quick, uh -huh. right? It works for the vinyl. So right now, you maybe you'd want to level this out a little bit more, but for the most part, it's fine. Do I want to flip the thing or just? Yeah, yeah, because if you feel like it's a little wet, you okay. want it to dry. So you could even watch, you could even flip it inside out. So what I would do right now is I'd flip it this way, right? And now it's super dry. Ah. Cool. So that's why you fold it in quarters, you can really maximize it. So you can see that it's really becoming nice and smooth, right? And it dries super, super quick. So now you know when you're wrapping, especially by yourself, this right. hood's, this hood's going to be literally half as hard, which is cool. Okay. But this, what this is doing is lowering the surface energy of the paint, which is good, uh -huh. except for on the edges and recessed areas. So now what I want you to do is take your finger in a towel, a okay. little switch. New towel? Yep. And now I want you to take panel wipe. Now panel wipe's like a super degreaser. And what this has is a little acetone in it, which is good. And I want you to just do a focus clean on the outside edges and the recessed areas. And I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Now the material is going to hold. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Outer edge. Just do a 360. And yeah. if you do a 360 now, now it's going to be super degreased on the edges, but yet on the inside area, the material is going to slide. So you get the best of both worlds. And this is why this protocol system, it doesn't take very long. It doesn't cost a lot to do. But the main thing is right now, now you know the material is going to stick on the edge. Now you know the material is going to slide in the middle. And maybe right now you'd want to do a quick little burst right in the recessed area here and right in the recessed area here, just with your finger weight. Yeah, these these areas are usually a problem. I yep. have to work these in separate. Yep, so now you're going to find, especially with the panel wipe right now, when you wrap these areas, it's going to grip and it's not going to pop out. So the panel wipe is really awesome for that, which is cool. Okay. And that is it. Now we're ready? Now we're ready. All right, let's party. <laughs> we're wrapping well, baby. Ugh. Thing. Okay. Right? Is there a better one? Maybe. Because <laughs> the problem with that is this. Is yes. It? Sometimes that happens. Yeah. All right. How do you do it? All right. So for me, for color change right now, what I found is I like to wrap the material around the edge. Uh -huh. So a very good, quick and dirty way to do it is I take the core tube of an old roll. Ah, that's a roll tube. Okay. Yeah. So Useful. it's just, it's, but I mean, it's perfect for DIY or anyone. So it doesn't have to be a store-bought tool. Okay. Cut the core tube and now it's nice and secure, right? Yes. So you don't want to use paper towels or water bottles or anything like that. But I do like wrapping it open now because now the hood is perfectly even. Okay. Much easier to wrap. And now you can wrap the material around the edges and you don't have to fight around the light. You don't have to fight around the fender. So I talk about, it's like the, now the hood can breathe. True. Cool. True. And now we're good. Okay. So how that's, do I lay this stuff on? Well, well, without crinkling. Right, so we can take it off again and let's roll it back up. Okay. Right? So right now, again, if you do your superhero flip, <laughs> what can happen right now, if you can see it, if you flip it right now, right in the middle is a big zipper. And you can self-heal that out, it just takes time. Yeah. So there's a different way to do it. So how I generally do it, and again, if you're by yourself, so if the panel's rolled up, uh -huh. I usually take it here and I come to the car. So I don't come from the side. Okay. I'll come from straight on, and I'll flip it out and I roll it like this. 
And then what I do is about halfway here, I let the panel fold like this. Okay. And then I slide it up. Ah. Because I used to get that zipper a lot too. Yeah. So it's all about modifying. So for me, again, you can self heal it, but I don't like to lose time. Right. Because my goal is to be home with my wife and daughter. Correct. This gets me home quicker. Yeah. So again, that, now I have to like make sure that's off the thing and then heat it up first before I do anything else with it. Right. Yeah. Which is okay. No, but, that's, that's more, that's more inconvenient. <laughs> I'll find a dramatic way of laying it the way you lay it. You could throw it up <laughs> and let it fall. I don't know. Whatever works for you. But right now, we're going to take these magnets. Okay. Right? Well, I can tell you why you don't want to use the circular ones. Okay. Let me hear. If, if you leave it on there for too long, it leaves an impression. 100%. Because the little magnets inside of the rubber goes through the rubber and then it, it just stays there. You... And it stays forever. <laughs> no, seriously. Yes, it does. It doesn't come out. Yeah, because once you wrap a panel, you got to make sure that you, you're only magneting like a, a, a side a side portion. Yep. Otherwise it's permanent. It's super frustrating. Yeah. Right. So one reason I don't like the magnets is they leave that impression. Number two is right now, you and I are gonna cut this panel out. Oh, right? Yeah. And we're gonna trim it to size. Right now, if I put the magnet here, it's cool, but now. Yeah, I need like four magnets. Right. So you need four, which is super expensive. Now, if I take this and I can spread it out. Oh, now this spreads. It spreads. Yo. So now it's extra strong. Okay. And you always want to do with the handle side up though. Oh, handle side up. Got the it. reason why if you handle side up, because right now you can put it here, you and I can, now the panel doesn't shift at all. Super strong. Yeah. Because the pressure is even out, it doesn't leave an impression on the vinyl, which is really cool. That's and when I want to take it off, I just do this. Oh my goodness. Cool. Huh? Yeah, because the other one, I have to like roll it off. Right. Yeah. Okay. And this, this you can put soap and water on this. You can clean it so it stays clean. But the main thing is right now, if you want to do quick and dirty, you can do that. Uh huh. But once you want to get it in the right spot now, you can flip it open and do that. Oh, okay. And that's not too strong on the on the car? No. Hey, <laughs> go or the magnet purse right now. Magnet purse? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'll take it. All right, all right. Because it kind of holds like a purse, you know, but it's cool. Let's change the name. Dang. Magnet purse. All right, sweet. All right, so now let's get in position and let's trim that. it out. So right now you want extra material top to bottom, uh -huh. right? But actually let's let's tweak the game a little bit. Let's take it back. Yeah. So right now let's pull the hood down a little bit right okay. now. All right. So let's put the magnet on top here. Okay. Right. So I, when I was watching some of your videos this morning yeah. on the treadmill, I noticed that you did everything great except for you'd have to do the prep a little bit more. Right. Just to kind of take it to that, make it easier. So right now we propped it open with a thing. So uh -huh. if now you can prop open your hood. Okay. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some masking tape, which I have over here. And look at your corner by the hood right now on the yeah, fender. Yeah, it gets a little difficult because little it dips downwards. It dips down. It's hard to get the material inside there. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape on the top edge now, right to here. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow the material to kind of slide in there easily as opposed to grip on the fender. So if you put some oh. masking tape in there, and again, it's just a little bit I of prep. I do have the dipping problem, yes. Yes. But now this solves, this solves the dipping problem. Ah, because it doesn't stick to your thing right so this is a, the biggest thing we talked about in the rapids too in the workshops is lowering the surface energy uh -huh. so you can hook the material because it's all about relaxing the material into that section okay so by opening the hood it makes this a little trickier to wrap but by putting the masking tape it kind of makes it now easier for open and this dipping down cool cool so now the dipping problem solved there's just a little bit of masking tape so now let's bring it back up okay and get it in position how much extra do you like to have over the corner do you like to make it close or a little extra? Um, it depends on the car. Yeah. Right now, this one covers the whole thing. It doesn't matter. On a Supra, you have to make a stretch. So yeah. I get it on that edge first. Smart. And then, and then I, I know I can stretch the corner Smart. about an inch. That's the way to do it? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So now that I have it there, uh, what I like to do is cut the excess material away. Do you right. still have that Sharpie on you or no? Uh, Maybe. Or I, I'll, I can grab I don't. it. Oh, wait. I got it. But so, I just take the thing and cut it. Well, can I just cut it? I don't like to do that. Oh, All right. I don't know about you, but sometimes I mess up a cut. Have you ever cut it too short? Here's a trick. You want to see my trick? Sure. So I always put the knife and then I put my finger here. Ah, that's good. So I can always feel it. Nice. I like that. That's so cool. I don't need to do an extra Sharpie step. All right. So if my, if my finger is always there, then my cut is always an even length across. That works. So if I did my thumb like that, I could do my thumb. Yeah, that way you can cut that without even looking at it. I like that a lot. Cool. 
right? Because what I used to do is I used to kind of feel through here uh -huh. and do it with a Sharpie. Yeah. But I like that. It's cool. Because I mean, this is like, if I know the hood ends here, I would do the Sharpie to here. So that's my template. Yeah. And then when I cut, I could do that too. So whatever works, but I do like the pinky because it's kind of like, yeah, because you then, <laughs> then your then your your hand is the barrier. Yeah, yeah no, I like yeah. that. It's super sweet, and then it saves a step. So, because there's nothing worse, and I don't know about you, but I've definitely cut my panel short before. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why I do it now. How I do it now. I like the pinky. Yeah, because you can just feel it with your hand. That's cool. I like that. All right. So now that we have that, and I, do you save the scraps for door handles? For everything. For everything. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I usually put it in the car to be safe. So now here's a good tip right now, right, is we want to release the cap sheet, okay. right? But because we put triple S on it, it's still going to slide and glide a little bit, yeah. right? So right now we're going to start the cap sheet on your side, but I'm actually going to open this up. Actually, I'll take that little okay. magnet purse. Right. And put it here. I remember right. what you told me. So hold on. So Normally, when I pull the cap sheet off, I get so much static electricity, I can touch my son's lad <laughs> and shock him. So Which is kind of fun, actually. <laughs> But that's bad because it pulls all kind of dust from everywhere. Right. So luckily now your your audience knows to use the air compressor, which helps avoid. Yes. Right. But also what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to spray a little bit of the absolute on the cap sheet now. Mm -hmm. And now you know how to take it off. All right. So instead of yanking the whole thing off dramatically, which is exciting, you can uh, you can roll it up like a burrito, like this, and all the liquid gets compressed under here, and you feel absolutely no static at all which is great. And then at the halfway right. point, we can switch the magnets and then hold on. I spray it some more and we're good to go. All right, you're going to be seeing me do this in all my videos now, maybe a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> but now too, it also just, it's very important to recycle that. So we yeah. minimize waste. Now it's not laying all over the place because my wife always slips on it. Always. <laughs> when she goes into the garage. <laughs> So safety's first. So, you know, one thing we do on the wrap is that we always talk about your workspace reflects your wrap. Yeah. The cleaner your workspace, the better your wrap. That's right. That's Maybe. right. All right. So now that we've done that, now you feel like there's way less, you know, there's no static at all. Yeah. Which is cool. Which is going to make it so much easier to wrap. Right. Because if there's static in the material, it makes it actually grip to the car. True. Which makes it harder. True. Cool. Okay. So now, uh, I think with Triple S, we can go cowboy. So, oh, you just, just wing it. So normally what you would do is you would split it down the middle with yeah. the thing. No. No? Well, if I don't have triple S. Oh, okay. I split it down the middle. Right. But without triple S, I you just take the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right now, we're going to do it halfway because you created a zipper because you went Zorro and flipped it well, on. What I Ha oh, only halfway. Well, because so. we got we got to fix we got to fix this, and I think if we keep the All backing right. paper on, it'll be a so, little easier. So when I do it, yeah. If I was at home and my coach is not with me, <laughs> Mr. Justin, I would probably just take it to here. Yeah. Right, and then while the thing is tented up, super smart. All right, I'll just heat it out. I think it's clever. So now that zipper, you're self healing it, which is good. Okay. Nice. That's really smart. I like to keep the backing paper on. That's awesome. All right. And then uh, I don't see another one. Oh, maybe this one. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Nice. And then I'll pull the whole thing. Awesome. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll roll this thing up. So I would say don't even do that. You know, I have to have two trash cans at home. Why? Since I wrap in my house, I go, I tell the trash company, I, I need two trash cans. Well, so I, one's for wrap only. <laughs> well, can I give you a tip? What? I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do this? No. So what, what I do? So what I tell on the Wrap Institute uh -huh. is what I do is I don't roll it up because it takes time. Yeah. And what I do is I lay everything flat. And if I keep it flat, I put it under the car. Oh. Right? So all the backing paper goes under the car and it yeah. lays flat. So therefore, at the end of the day, then you do what you just did. But the whole wrap is in your hand. So now your trash bill goes in half. Genius. So that's what we call lay flat liner pile. So don't put the, that takes time. Okay. Now this saves time and, and also- they all stack together and cool. then you just roll it all at once. That's cool, Genius. right? So now, okay. So you now have... what I do is I go, all right, I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna just la line this up in this corner here. Okay. And then you can give me tips. Sure. All right, and then uh, I'll put a magnet thing down on cool. the corner. Okay. 
okay? And then uh, I like to do it this way. Okay. And I just set these two corners with a lot of horizontal tension. Okay. So you basically pull from side to side? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. at the beginning. Okay. And then I just get that corner, make sure it's on there. Then I magnet that thing. Okay. Really good. And then I come over here. And I grab these two ends. Oh. Nice. And then I just do this. Okay. Do this. So I kind of have like a, a central area that's already wrapped. Okay. And then I then I work it in, in little sections. Okay. Is there a better way to set this up? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think this is interesting to see. I mean, I think what you did here is good because the idea is to create what's called glass, right? Yeah. And that's a term I came up with in 2007. So you want no wrinkles before you squeegee, right. right? So if you look at the shapes now, it's interesting. I see a lot of wrinkles here. I don't see any wrinkles here. Yeah. I, I see a lot of wrinkles there and no wrinkles there. So it's almost like... I want know. that because I want to be able to pull it this way. I get it. And I think that's cool because right now I call these wrinkles more and more in the rap industry. We call them pyramids. Yeah. So this is like a pyramid, which means that material can spread out here, right? right? Which is cool. So I can show maybe a different one. All right. How would you do it? Okay. So why don't we pick it up again and just let it chill? Okay. Okay. Right. So it's just kind of like how you had it before. All right. All so right. we're going to guess kind of just kind of let it on like that. Right. right? So okay. right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus here. And I'm going to pick the material up just a little bit to this body line here. So you do this first. Yeah. Okay. Well, kind of. And I pick it up to here now. Yeah. Pick it up on this section. And I pull it to here. And again, this is the first time I'm using the material. So I'm kind of dialing in. So this feels pretty good to here. And I like to lock it in on the body line so I don't get that sandy. Does that make sense? Right. So now I get up to here and I pull it down nice and firm. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in this again from top to bottom to here. So this ridge first. Yeah. So I found that it's easier to start on the body lines. Okay. And I lock in this section here and I'm actually squeegeeing quite firm here. Because uh, maybe you notice that sometimes on a hot day when you pull across the body lines, it looks like there's sand there. Yeah. So if I lock this down first, I don't get any sanding. Right. Cool. All right. So now that this is set, this is kind of like my straight line here. Uh -huh. What I'll do is I'll come back over here now. And I'll pick the material up to there. And it's going to be nice and secure. Right? And I, I just kind of float it. So I'll snap it one more time like a sheet. Yeah. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull with my right hand and pull with my left hand. And I'm going to pull it and glass it out to here. So I set it to here as opposed to up here. Okay. Does that make sense? Because what I can do now is I can lock it to here and I see these wrinkles and they're pointing at the corner. Yeah. And if they point at the corner, I can pick it up. And now I can pull nice and firm to here and lock it on. So I still have the glass across, but now oh. I tack it here. Because what I can do here is what? See these wrinkles? Yeah. I can pitch these wrinkles up to here. So I'll pull this back down. Cool. And I can feel the triple S definitely helping. And now I can do it to here now. And now right. this side's good. But here's the difference now. Okay, what I want you to see is... How do you get rid of a lot of wrinkles in the middle? Right. Well, if you notice the shape now, th there's less wrinkles here and there's less wrinkles here. Yeah. So what I can do is this. Now I come back to what you did before. And I can okay. pop it up and I could pull the material down, kind of like what you did before. Right. But now, see the shape. So now with this shape now, instead of having the lines like this, yeah. Now the lines are going to the corner. Okay. So now I can pick it up to here, pop it up, and watch what I can do. I can spread it out, and I can pull down to here. Mm. Now this wrinkle says here. I pull to here, pull, and now same thing here. So now I got the pyramids like you had before. Yeah. I can pick it up to here, pull it up, and now watch what I do. I sp spread it out, and I pull here. Yeah. Now this material says pull to here, and I pull to here, and now I'm good. Now I have glass in between here and then I could just squeegee. Does that make sense? Interesting. It's different, but it's kind of the same. No, it's good. It's better because it you start to struggle a little bit here in the way I do it. So the more tension I put this way, the more it, tension it, it you help, have here. Yeah, it helps me down here, but you do run into some problems with some hoods. Yeah. I like the way you do it, and then there's less. There's less picking up of stuff. 
Well, because right what you have to think about is, is tension. We're yeah. dealing with tension, yeah. right? And the idea is how to spread the tension out to make it not box up on one area here, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And so what I want to show here though, is let's say this part's the easy part, the squeegee, right? Right. It's when you get to the edge, it gets a little funky. So one technique that we have on the Rapid Stew now is what we call zero stretch, right? Yeah. So imagine we get the material here. You see all these wrinkles, right? Yeah. But there's no wrinkles here. Right. So this means this area is going to be easy to take to there. This area is going to be super hard. Right. So watch what I do. I'm going to take the material to here. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shake the material. Right. And shaking the material is what we call the shimmy. So I shake it back and forth. So now those wrinkles are a little less. Uh huh. So instead of using heat now, watch what I do. I'm going to take those wrinkles that were here and I'm going to pull them to the middle. So I pull and I pull yeah. and I pull. And right now I'm taking the material right to the edge to here. Right. And by pulling out, I can actually spread that material out without having to use heat. And when I take it to the edge now, I can squeeze you to here and squeeze you to here. And when I get the tension to here now, okay, I did stretch it, right? Yeah. Well, what's cool about it now, watch what I do, okay? Once I run my finger to here, it's locked under the edge. And now here, I can just squeegee this whole side in one shot. Right. So I'm not working in little stages right now. I try to spread it out, get it to the edge. But you know the material likes to do what? Yeah, it likes to go back the way it was. Right. But I want it to go back to the way it was, but I want it to do the wrapping for me. Right. So now watch what I do. Once I get the material to the edge here, I've guided the material under the edge. Like for example, I get it to here. I run my finger here, but watch what happens when I heat. When I heat the material, it shrinks under the hood. Ooh. So because it shrinks under the hood, it's doing the wrapping for me. So now there's no tension here. So you are spreading it and pulling it back towards the middle. Yeah, well, the tension was here on the face. Right. So I picked it up to the body line and I shifted it this way. And yeah. I shifted it this way. So I took the tension that was there and I spread it across here. Then, even though there's still tension in the film, once I got it under the edge, I hit it with heat and now it shrinks up into the edge. Mm. Which means now I can actually cut to the edge because it's holding the edge. Okay. Does that make sense? No, that does make sense. So it's a similar process, it's yeah. just a little different. Cause I think here, I just noticed that there's too much tension here, which makes it harder for here. But even here, check this out, right? I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna hold the material off the surface now. Kind of get it nice and relaxed to the top. Take it to here. And once I have it set to here, this is easy to work out. But now this is what we call zero stretch of the wrap Institute. Oh, it would help if the heat gun's plugged in. <laughs> It's come, come over here and clip this uh, when he's doing it. Because your material is, is calendar film, right? So it likes to shrink a little bit naturally from the manufacturing process. Okay. So right now I'm going to use that to my advantage. So I'm going to put the heat gun above my shoulder here so I don't have to worry about the cord, but watch what I can do. Instead of pulling the film, I'm going to overlap my heat strokes like I'm squeegeeing. And if I do that now, you can see those wrinkles, those pyramids now start to even out. And what those pyramids are doing is forming to the car. And all my hand has to do is pull the material off the surface. And then I just do this. Mm. Cool. And then I take it down to here. And the same thing here. I just, instead of pulling it to the car, I just take the heat and I overlap it back and forth. And I can feel the material shrink. And then I just guide it right to the edge. And if I guide it right to the edge now, I just run a finger and see all those wrinkles? Those wrinkles are great. Because once I run the finger here, watch what I do. I'm gonna take the heat gun and the material is gonna shrink under the car. And if it shrinks under the car, it's wrapping the car for me. And that means I can cut straight to the edge. Look how slick that is. And it also makes it easier up. So even here, check out this edge. I can pick it up to here now, hold the material nice and high. And again, I'm not pulling the material. I'm just gonna guide it. So I'm gonna take the heat gun and watch what the material does. I'm making the material kind of shrink and relax. And the material, because it shrinks a lot, basically wraps itself. So I can wrap it to here, and I feel the material just kind of glide to the corner. Check. I pick it up to here. I spread that tension out. Now I just relax it to the wow, edge. Wow, look at that. Cool. And then I continue the process to here. So watch, look at my finger. Uh -huh. So I'm not pulling right now, I'm just guiding the material. And this again, it, what we call in the wrap suit, this is zero stretch in the wrap matrix. So I'm guiding the material to the surface, and you'll see all those wrinkles disappear. Look at that. 
So it, feel, it feels like magic. And now I don't have to work hard to wrap because the material is wrapping for me. Same thing here, watch. Last se section here, look at my hand. My, my this finger. is because you, well, you tension it out the, well, the first way? Or? What we'll do is I'll reverse it a little bit and I'm gonna take a piece and I'll show why this, what the material is doing right now. Because what I'm, look at my finger. My finger is just kind of making sure it goes in the right direction. Yeah. But I'm not pulling at all. I'm just letting the material sit. And look how easy this is to wrap. Because okay. once I come to here now, okay, I can take my application glove, which I'll grab in a second, right? So now the material's bridging this section here. And now I'm going to show you a technique that on the rapid suit, we call this the palm technique. Can I do it without gloves? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I always joke in the workshop that I use Justin Juice. <laughs> and I can use Justin Juice, which is cool. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. And you could. It's just fuck. It's the just, only reason is that... Oftentimes, I guess when I'm wrapping, I don't glass out the whole panel. Right. Because I feel like I have to work it into these curves first. You might have to. Although, because some, some curves are too, are too sharp. And if I glass it out and then I push it in. Right. But most of the cars that I did at the beginning, like we have an Audi A7, right? Okay. It has a nice inlet on the on the side of the car and every time i push it in it pops out it pops out okay. over time so but when I, I i understand yeah you're, you're over stretching because it's tight yeah so of course feed it in yeah every okay. recessed area is different but what is interesting right now and maybe once i show you the piece you'll understand yeah, it yeah. what i did is when i took the material to the body line here i held it away and when i hit it with heat it actually shrank so right now there's very little tension in this piece i think if right now you bridge it at room temperature without doing anything in uh -huh. here it would be hard to push in. Okay. Right? But right now, check it out. There's no heat on this material oh, because right now. You heat, because you heated it up Come on over. as you were yeah. pulling with one finger. Well, it's hard to see. Yeah. But I wasn't pulling. I was holding. Yeah, you were so, holding it. But the, the material still shrank to the car. Mm. So there's so much. There's Once I show you the piece, this, okay. this material naturally shrinks by itself. Okay. So by z what, I, what we call zero stretching, by holding the material lightly off the surface, yeah. and because I was going slowly with the heat here, it was actually shrinking. So a lot of the tension that came from the manufacturing uh -huh. area actually took all the tension out here. Oh, okay. So now instead of adding heat to take this material, and watch what I do. I just take this glove, yeah. and look how easily this material conforms in. There's no tension in the film anymore. That's because right now, I took the tension out with heat, and look, this is a very steep recessed area for your uh -huh. material, but because I relaxed it ahead of time, there's zero tension in there. But what about I, right here? So this, I would say that this this line is steeper than this curve. Well, because th this curve is like kind of like a, um, a uh, door this handle. one or this, this one. curve that you just pushed in is kind of like a door handle, and I know it will stay. Right. Right. But this one I think is more steep. Right. So I normally when I wrap, um, I wouldn't bridge this. You'd pick it up and feed it in. Yeah, I would Which literally I think be up like this, and I would go into there first. Right. And then all this would be loose. Yeah. So I don't use a wrap glove because I'm, I'm like picking it up and then I have to put the glove on. And so I just, I would just squeegee it into here. Right. But you're saying that it's better to, to glass out the whole thing and then. And it can then... be, as long as you have an outlet. Like right now we we're talking so long that he's kind of settled here. Yeah. But normally I let this bridge out and take it in here first. And okay. I think with your film, Maybe I can kind of lift it up to here, and give it some space, right? Yeah. So now this area here, watch what I do. So on this area here, what I would do normally, I'm, let me grab my squeegee over here, is I think what you're doing by picking up and feeding is definitely the right way. Okay. Because it's safer. But right now, if I have the air to escape here, I think, I'm actually gonna squeegee from the outside here. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing the vinyl into the recessed area. And if I push the vinyl from here right. into here, look, there's no tension. Uh -huh. I'm not pushing in, I'm feeding what we, ca we call okay. this on the rep and suit of mouth. So because we have triple S now, now I can feed it from the outside in and there's zero tension here. Yeah. But if I start here, there's tension there. Okay. But if I start from here, I'm actually shifting the material a little bit into here and now I don't have to use a glove or Paradox That's juice. Good. Paradox juice. <laughs> well, I like the way you're doing it because it does prevent the problem of me lifting it up so often. 100%. Because every time I go in here, I get contamination from just picking it up, the air from, you know, my fingers, yeah. whatever it is. And the less you pick it up, the, the better. The less you pick it up, the better. Right. Okay. 
But even here, like for example, we're well, now though. Now this is trapped. Yeah, what so do? what do you do? I don't know. What would you do? What I would do is I would lift this whole thing up <laughs> to here and let that out. And when you lift it up, what happens? And then I get, I, I can get some contaminants right here when I lift it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna make this any smaller, uh -huh. right? And I'm gonna find a section here that's kind of on the flat side. I'm gonna take the tip. You're right gonna up. poke it on the car? I'm gonna poke it on the car. Okay. Right, and I make a couple of pokes. And that's okay? Right, it's totally okay. Okay. Because watch, this material self heals, right? Yeah. Those are tiny pokes, they're right. microscopic, but watch. Once I poked it, do you see this bubble already naturally becoming less? Yeah. Because the air is naturally escaping out there. Right. Right. So watch what I do. I'm going to change the heat setting now. This is why I like these heat guns because they're variable. I'm going to cut the heat in half, and I'm just going to add a little bit of heat and go slow. Then watch what happens to the bubble. It should get a little smaller. So now it relaxes. Holy shit! Look at that. What right. the? So now that it relaxes, watch. Now I take my glove, or I can take Paradox juice. And I go here and I just slowly go from here and I try, I want to let the air breathe out of those tiny little holes. Okay. So I take my time, okay, and I work it out. Because if you go too fast, you're going to get a glue line. Right. Or a cinch. So now I see that it kind of closed again because I heated it. So I make it little tiny pokes. I'm not crazy about this, but I don't want to pick it up. Right. Because what I also know is this material self heals. So once I do that now, I can slowly go here, slowly go here, and right before I get to the holes. So you can see I'm working to those holes right to here. Watch what I do. I'm going to load this with heat and those holes are going to disappear. Are oh, you going to max heat this? Now I'm going to max heat it, which I can. Good. Mm -hmm. Max heat. And watch what I do. I'm going to hit it with heat and those holes are going to disappear. Once I do that, now, cool. And I heat it with one more heat right now. And now it's good. There we go. Cool. Very nice. So if I have to, I poke it with bubbles. But again, that's what's just because we let it sit. Last resort. Yeah. Last resort. Normally we want to squeegee it all out. Oh, 100%. Place, right? And if we did this in flow, cool. Yeah. But I, I, I like how you're doing it in the sense that like you are feeding it. And I think that's, at the reference suit we teach, there's no one way to wrap. Right. Right. I mean, I know there's professionals in DIY, but everyone, there's different strokes for different folks. So whatever makes you happy, I think in this case, by you feeding it in, I think that's cool. And I think it's safe. But it does have a... But how I, of lifting I think what you're doing is great, but I think if you take off the whole backing paper, yeah. it's hella hard. Yeah. But I think right now, if you did the backing paper cutter yeah. and you kept the backing paper on, yeah. I think that would make it much easier. So if you are going to feed it, which yeah. is totally fine, I would keep the backing paper on and do the backing paper cutter. Right. Because if you had the backing paper here, how easy would it be to hold off the surface? True. But right now, if you try to hold it off the surface like this, yeah. it's going to fold on itself. It's super hard. Correct. But that means I would actually work with your son. Yeah. So if your son was holding the panel here, uh -huh. just off the surface, and you were squeegeeing in, yeah. and you work together, your son is the even tension, and you could actually feed it in, and it would cut your install time in half. It's a reference that we call it a yo-yo moment. Oh, okay. So if you just say yo-yo, and your son comes over and holds it just for a little <laughs> bit, well, just, if he holds it for a little bit, and just holds it off the surface, then you'd be able to squeeze it in, feed it in, get it to here, and if you did it on both sides, your install time is cut in half. Nice. And you're good. Okay. So yeah. And you don't really care about squeegeeing the middle of the hood first. No. No. Squeegee is last. You squeegee the middle last? Yeah. Well, what it depends if you on get the film. Air, tra air trapped in here. Like but, here. Right. But this right. is normally right now, I would pick it up to here. And now I could pick it up all the way to this front. And then I would just squeeze it on. Right? So we could actually pop it open farther to here. And again, First time I'm using your film, but basically we pop it open. And normally yeah. it would take us more, but now you and I could hold it here. Right. And actually- Now most of this can, can go out. Right. So if we did this sooner, we're good. Yeah. But at the same time, I like your technique. Again, this is the first time I'm using your material. Yeah. It is a high initial tack. Right. Right. So how you did it here and here, I get, because you've solved the problem here, because right. it makes it easier. It just creates a bigger problem here. Yeah. But maybe you could work it out. I'm just saying, but I would actually just recommend working. The backing paper cutter is going to be a total difference. And I'm curious if that helps. I think it would. Maybe. It's just, um, I get scared of glassing the whole panel. I get because it. Because oftentimes I get stuck right. in a bubble and I have to like redo the whole thing. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to squeeze it from the middle first. Which, I mean, and I then come out. But I get it. Again, Here. I'm just, I, this is the first time I'm touching your film. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm starting to be like, you know what? That actually makes sense given your film. If you're working with a different brand that maybe doesn't do that, my style works with, let's say, Avery 3M and KPMF. Yeah. With your style film, I would do the backing paper cutter, uh -huh. and I think that would make it easier. Okay. So that's just my input. Okay. Cool. I like this. That sounds great. Yeah. Great tricks. Yeah, but I think what you're doing, I don't think what you're doing is wrong. Given yeah. your film, and I think with your film, I think you're doing the right techniques. I think they could just be maybe modified a little bit. You definitely have a cleaner finish. 
Maybe. the way you do it. <laughs> For sure. Well, but you know what I'd like to do now is maybe we take this off and I can show you zero stretch and the logic, and I think you'll understand. I think it'll be like a light bulb. Okay. All right, so what I want to do right now is talk about zero stretch. Zero stretch. Right. But the best way to explain zero stretch is to show this demo in the window first. Okay. Then we're going to go to the hood. Okay. Cool. So a lot of people know, or maybe a lot of people don't know if they're DIY and they're new, is that this material likes to stretch and shrink, right? So the easy demo to show that is just take a piece on the window. You can do it like on a wire trash can as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add heat to the film, right? And I'm going to go back and forth slowly. And what this is doing is, is warming the film and making it pliable. So I put this, uh, kind of just take the heat gun, overlap it from top to bottom, and you can see all those wrinkles kind of go out of the film, right? So yeah. once all the wrinkles disappear, that tells me the material's pretty happy. And this is what I normally wrap. But right now I'm gonna make it a little hotter so it stretches a lot. So now I'm gonna take the film and I'm going to stretch it. And what's cool is the material doesn't break, it doesn't shatter. And this tells you that the material is strong and it's also flexible. But here's the deal right now is when you're wrapping, it's a balance. Uh -huh. And you know this dance, dance yep. right now. If you stretch it too far, what happens? Uh, it discolors. It discolors. And it doesn't come back. It doesn't come back. Yeah. And when you get it to an edge, like on a mirror, if you stretch it too much, what happens? Fingers. Fingers. All right. <laughs> so you're putting too much tension in the car because the material, if you stretch it, it wants to do what? Yeah, when it gets hot. Well, this. when you stretch it, it wants to shrink. And it wants to shrink back, not just a little bit, it wants to shrink back 100%. So right now the material wants to shrink back to its original shape and tension a lot. And to be honest with you, I used to hate this property of the film. Every time I wrapped a bumper or a mirror or a door handle, if I overstretched it right now and I'll pull it off here, the material would shrink. Yeah. And so for years and years and years, I fought this. I like that because yeah? it shrink wraps. Yeah. But now I can use this on an even deeper level because now, because I know the material likes to stretch and shrink, yeah. it's kind of like Kung Fu now. Is I used to be, a, you know, like if you're a black belt or if you're a white belt and someone punches you, yeah. it's scary. Yeah, right. But if you're a black belt and someone punches you, it's great uh -huh. because that person's giving you their energy and you could turn it on themselves. Yes. So right now I'm like a black belt in Rap Fu, right? That's so right. Rap Fu. So right now, because I know the material likes to shrink, if I stretch it, watch what I can do. Right. Cool. Let's come to the hood. So I'll take a piece and put it here. Okay. And for your material, and I think for what's gonna help you wrap better, especially when you get to mirrors, is if you do this. And what I like to do is maybe wrap a mirror, you wrap a mirror normal, just yeah. take it off. No. And then wrap a mirror oh. with zero stretch. What do you mean normal? Well, watch. Okay, so you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna wrap a mirror like you normally do. Uh-huh. And then you're gonna zero stretch it and wrap the mirror like you normally do. Oh, okay. And you'll be surprised. All right. Right. I'll do both ways. So check this out, right? I took off the cap sheet. Yeah. Right? And I'm gonna take your material off the liner right now. So I take it off. Okay. I place it on here. And then I'm gonna take this piece now and I'm gonna put it on exactly. Whoa. Right? We'll watch. Uh -huh. Okay. So right now, check this out. So if you can see, there's no white trim. Right. So did I stretch your material? No. Cool. Okay. Watch, watch this. I'm going to take the heat gun on the highest setting and I'm going to overlap my heat strokes on the material. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to go super slow. I'm not just heating to stretch. I'm heating to shrink. So if I take the heat gun right now and I go super slow, okay, you're going to see something happen to the material. What's so, happening? Well, what I just did in the window earlier just now is I heated the film and I stretched it and it shrank, right? Yeah. Well, when the manufacturer of your material made the film, they actually stretched it before they gave it to you. So they stretch it during the manufacturing process because this is calendar film. Mm -hmm. So how they make calendar film is it starts off as a solid and they smash it out into a sheet. Okay. So it naturally comes stretched for you. Wow. And if you don't know this right now, this is what makes wrapping a bumper or a mirror or a car or even a hood with your material hard because it comes already stretched. Okay. But right now what I just did is I took it back to its original shape and tension before it was made. Oh. So right now this material is totally relaxed because I just took all the tension out from the manufacturing process. So Ooh. now if I take it to here now, if well, I- what, what do you do with a big old piece? You can't do that. Yeah, we do it while, while we do it. 
Oh. So you and I wrap a bumper later, we're okay. gonna use zero stretch, okay. and the material's gonna shrink to the car while we wrap it. Okay. It's gonna make you wrapping a bumper, like literally probably 80% less hard. Interesting. Dude, it's crazy. Okay. So now if you know this, now the material is shrinking, yeah. right? So it's, what, like, uh, it's like what the, the tent guys do. Exactly. Yeah. So they, they, they conform it to the thing, right. and then they heat it to take the shape of the thing. 100%. Okay. So the more the material shrinks, actually the easier it is to wrap, because if you harness it, oh. it's actually going to wrap the car for you, which is what I did here. Right. So here, so now, let's come back to what I wrapped here. So when I took the material to here, and there's all these wrinkles here, instead of forcing that material out to here, uh -huh. I held the material here, and when I heated it, what did the material do? It, it shrank to the car. It shrank to the right. car. So all I had to do is, because the material is shrinking so much, that allows me to guide it to the car and it shrinks to the car. Oh, okay. And that's the So beauty. that's why you hold it out and then you heat it. As a, all I'm doing is guiding. When before, uh -huh. I used to do this. I used to grab the material and go and yeah. stretch it to the car. Right. Now I do this and I heat it with heat because I know your material is going to do that heavy lifting for me. Right. All the energy that I need to do to make the car wrap uh -huh. is already in the material. Ooh. And I didn't know that for 25 years. That's crazy. So now I work in the wraps itself. So your material, especially, uh -huh. when we get to a bumper, you're going to be freaking out. What if I stop? There's no stopping? No, you go all the way to the end. All right, hold on. So, no. Yo! <laughs> Yo! Because <laughs> it's literally going to suck to the car. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah. I'm going to try that. That's cool. <laughs> but that's zero, okay. that's zero stretch. That's zero stretch. So if you combine zero stretch with what we call the matrix, uh -huh. which is what we're going to do on the bumper, that's, okay. the, that's the mind blow. So normally, for this mirror, I would two-piece it. Okay, I'll get you some knifes. Would you one-piece this? No way. You would two-piece it. Oh, hell yeah. Even with the zero stretch. Even with the zero stretch. Okay. Because it's well, easier and it looks the same. Why, why make it your life harder <laughs> when... Seriously. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll put it here for you. Maybe you put okay. it here. We'll pretend the back is already right. Shall we? And yeah. I always do the back last. Oh, you do? Yeah, because the back holds the top. That's true. You're right. Okay. So paradox me wrapping. So here's what I normally do. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've seen a couple of install videos and I really struggle on mirrors. So basically I just look at the shape of the thing. Hold on, there's some stuff on it. Okay. So basically I just hook it here. All right, I just make sure it covers everything. And then I take the heat gun. And I just do this. So I just heat up this corner here. And then I, I see where the thing is flowing. So I I would I would hook it there with the knifeless line. Yep. So all the tension flows that way. Yeah, I, do, I do exactly the same. And then I would uh, take this. I wouldn't necessarily heat it up because I kind of have to move it later. Okay. I would kind of just lay it up top like this. Nice. Okay, along the knifeless line. And then I got all this here. Hold on. Too much stretch. I want it to kind of flat. But all the tension needs to flow along that knifeless tape. Okay, well, I like that. All right. And then what I would do is, I would just take this whole thing. Yep. I heat it up. Okay, so I'm not pulling on it. Okay. I'm just giving the whole thing uh, a relaxing feel. Okay. Where it feels like taffy to my fingers. Nice. All right, so. I watch your videos and I know how you get rid of glue lines. Okay. So, so there's potentially a glue line right here where the difference in the shape is. And that's where Triple S would help. So I would lift it up a little bit past the, the point and then okay. I would just bring it around. Okay. And make sure all the all the tension is flowing the right way. Okay. Some of that fold behind there. Okay. And then basically what I want is to kind of come down to here at an angle. Nice. I like and that. all this is like that. Okay. Right? I do have this. I don't know if, the, if we'll it's talk dirty. About that. That's sanding. That's the sanding? Yeah, we'll okay, talk about so, yeah so this shows up sometimes. You yeah. guys want to zoom That's, in on That'll this. be triple S. We'll show how to avoid that. Okay. And then I lift this up here. Okay. All right. And then basically, because I have a lot of tension going sideways, if I just spread this out a little bit, yeah. then it, it kind of just wants to wrap. Yeah, but this does, like I said, this does happen sometimes. Oh, there's an air bubble. Okay. So I let that out. Okay. 
So I like oh, how you I pick it up here. and just heat to shrink. It's good. Okay, and then I, I just make sure that any vertical wrinkles are spread out. Nice. Okay. And then I take my uh, my squeegee here. Hold on. Yeah, so I just kind of put it horizontal and it's good. Oh, okay, okay. Like that. So I'll take the squeegee and I lift all this up, uh, feed that in. Okay. Okay. To that edge there. Okay. Then I would test it. Yeah. Just to make sure nothing's coming off the edge. Okay. Um, and then down here, I would just do this thing where I would. Uh... Nice. Okay. So that's going, that's flowing with, with the knife list. Okay. No, I like that. And then here I'm like, you know, because all the wrinkles flowing sideways, I'm gonna get out all these, any glue lines here or yeah. stretch marks. Okay. And then I just basically let it go. All right. And then that's basically how I do a mirror. Okay. I mean, to be honest, it's very close to how I would do it. I would just modify it in two things. Okay. Right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get So what, so right now, again, I mean, this is good. I mean, so right now, if I analyze it, yeah. right? So right now, I think it's good. But let's see if we pick this up, if it moves at all, right? So see how, if I pick it up, it moves? Oh, yeah, yeah. If I, if I, so I pick it up first and then I put it into here like I, this? I would heat before you do it. Oh, okay. So right now, there's a little bit of tension there. Yeah. So right now, if you pick it up and I hit it with heat one more time, see how it shrinks in a little bit? Uh -huh. So I always pick it up and I shrink, then I tuck it in. Okay. So that's one. But let's tuck the main thing right now. So I think overall the technique is awesome. I mean, I would use the exact same thing. The only thing is you see the sanding here. Yeah. Right. And it was. I think overall I would. I would say this is kind of how I do it. Okay. But so now, I don't. I don't know if that's because normally when I'm doing, I'm assuming it's because I'm just getting it dirty. No. Somehow. It's not. It's not dirt. It's sanding. Oh, okay. So we can check it out. Yeah. So right now, if we pick it up, right now. Okay. Look at the adhesive. So right now, if we look at the adhesive, you see the lines and you see that. Okay. Yeah, see, I thought that was my skin particles or something. No. Oh. No, that's actually because the adhesive drags on the surface because the tension is high. The adhesive rolls off and it looks like sand. Ah. Because the surface energy is too high. So, okay. Right? So I think you did everything great, right? Except for let's modify it with two things right now. I'm going to take triple S. Okay. And the triple S, okay? You guys need to get gallons and gallons of this stuff. If it can solve that problem and it looks slick like he did it on the hood, that's what you need. That's okay. what you need. So right now we just put triple S on there. So now it's super slick. So okay. you're not going to get the sanding. It's going to make a big difference. I want you to install with this piece now. That's the piece that zero stretch. Okay, that's been zero stretched out. So, so think okay. about it. So the only difference now is I put triple S. Yeah. And I zero stretched it. And I want you to wrap it in the exact same way. The exact same way. I don't think you did anything wrong. Do I need heat gun to whatever uh, no, I'm doing. You, okay. no, exactly how you did before. All right, heat, all right, okay. shrink, hook. All right, here we go. But I would heat that first before you yeah, yeah. Like you did everything great. I wouldn't change anything so about your technique. I'm heating this up. Okay. Right, but you're gonna feel it now kind of breathe a little easier to Down the back side. Down. Oh, it, it does feel like it does feel like it's not fighting me more as hard as what it was doing before. Yeah, because before it was like a little tense and that came from the manufacturing facility. But now watch, especially here when you pull it across. Okay. You're so gonna here feel, we go. You're gonna feel it breathe. And I don't here even, we I don't, go. I didn't think you need to use heat. Oh, but try it. Okay. Do whatever you want. Well, I'll do the same method just to be consistent. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, yeah, so we're going to make it look like taffy. Okay. And now I'm going to make sure there's that. So watch watch when you pull I out how this. this feels. Watch. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, so I'm not even having to pull that hard at all. Exactly. And it really conforms way more than I yeah, so am used to. Right. So now there's way less wrinkles here. You pull nice and even here, but where's that sanding? Yo! <laughs> it's crazy, huh? Look how slick that is. It's crazy how simple it is, huh? That's awesome. See, this whole time I thought that I was just, it's the, not the dirt just magically shows up. Well, I struggled, I struggled that for years. <laughs> now check out the top. Now do the exact same thing you did okay. at the top. But my main top. point is now the material's way less pissed off than it was. So watch how it just kind of relaxes. So it's still going to relax to the top but you can feel that it's just less pissed off. Oh yeah. And this is zero stretch. So the wow. manufacturer put a lot of tension in the film. So for a mirror, uh -huh. all you got to do is zero stretch and look how the material just sits. Or any like really intricate, like curves. But do you feel like you're pulling less hard? Yeah, I'm, so you're I'm barely even pulling at all. So you don't have to work as hard to wrap a mirror. And if you don't and have look, to work hard. 
Look at that. And like, usually I have a lot more like distortions and um, like stretch marks or whatever that I have to like work out. Yeah. But this is like really nice. This is the same roll. It's the same piece. That's crazy. Yeah. And now here, especially on this bottom section here, you can feel it. Look at it. You feel it come out of your hand. Yeah, it does. So now the material is behaving like how it wants to. But because there's tension from the manufacturing process, the whole time you're fighting to get it on the car because it doesn't want to go on the car. And you're saying I can do the zero stretch on a bumper. On any panel? Anything. Any panel. Door handles, mirrors, windows. Okay. Fenders. When, you know, you know. later, you and I are going to wrap a fender. You're going to wrap a fender your way. Yeah. And then I'm going to wrap it my way. And then you're going to maybe modify it. And I'm going to wrap my yeah. fender with zero stretch. And you're going to wrap your fender with your style. Oh, man. I'm going to have to start paying for it. Just to pay classes for you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys better go sign up right now. But now this makes me happy. Because again. It's awesome. But the thing is, I mean, honestly, that yeah. mirror looks like paint. How much sanding do you have? I get excited. About, I get excited about Triple S because it looks how it should. The triple S really does the trick. Okay. I'm sold. I'm getting a bunch of it. Can you imagine you have that on the fenders, bumpers. Your car's now going to look like super paint. This honestly looks like a hundred times better than I normally do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that Maybe they'll stop criticizing me because then that's going to look good. Maybe it looks too good now. <laughs> now they're going to criticize you for looking too good. No, no, this is great. But this is why the Rapid Studios exists, to help people of all skill levels. You know, wow. you love rapping. Yeah. Now you love rapping more because your result is better. That makes, that's, that's what makes us tick. I know, the instant gratification. And then on top of that, it looks like it's painted on there. It's amazing. But again, how did you have to change a lot? You didn't change no. anything other than two steps. No, I just- Zero stretch and just, triple S. Zero, yeah. That's so it. So I want to zero stretch everything. And now you will. you showed me. But I'm going to show you how. Okay. Roofs. Everything. Fenders, bumpers. Everything. All right. Just showed you zero stretch at triple S. All right. Yeah, yeah. Game changer for the mirror. So now your mirror looks like paint. Easier to wrap. Again, that's the beauty of the rapid suit and zero stretch. And now let's take it to a bigger scale. Let's do this fender. See how it works. The whole time I've been rapping for seven years and I thought that <laughs> just because what I was doing, I was getting like my, my, my finger skins under here or the paint was bad or I don't know, but with this that he's showing me with the triple S and the zero stretch and this thing looks literally like paint. Okay, you guys need to go and subscribe to the Rap Institute right now. Check out all their videos. I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of collaborations with them because he's gonna show me how to do this thing on the whole car. Awesome, check it out. So